So we can look too at what perfect cubes are and the corresponding cube root. So using some isometric dot paper here, I've created two images that are perfect cubes. So I think if we assume that each one of these is worth one, one unit, this, this would be a side length of three. And the height is three and the width of this cube is three. And we know from our surface area and volume that length times width times height is the volume for a cube. So three times three times three would give this a volume of 27. This one is very similar, except it has a length and a width and a height of four. And four times four times four gives this one a volume of 64 cubic units. So we could say then that three times three times three is 27 and four times four times four is 64. Well, because we are multiplying three of the same number together to get 64, we would say that 64 is a perfect cube and 27 is a perfect cube because 3 times 3 times 3 gives us 27. So these numbers in this column here would be perfect cubes. And the numbers in this column here, these are the cube root. So when we take the cube root of 27, we will be looking for the length of the side of a cube that would give us 27. So the cube root of 27 would be 3. And the cube root of 64 is 4 because a cube that has 64 units in it would need a length and a width and a height of 4. And we could have gone back here and found some other perfect cubes. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So 8 is a perfect cube, and we would write the cubed root of 8 is 2. Remember the symbol for square root was just this, so say we had the square root of 9 being 3. We did not put a little number up in this top left corner here. If there's no number written up here, then it means it's a square root. We can do cube roots as well, so when we're doing a cube root, we must write the little 3 up in the top left corner so that people know we're looking for the number when multiplied 3 times gives us 8. And of course that's 2, because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. We could find the perfect cube when we multiply 5 3 times together. 5 times 5 times 5 would be 125. So we could say the cube root of 125 would be 5. Or in other words, if we were to build a cube that had 125 little cubes in it, the side lengths would be 5. Say we were asked to find out what the cube root of 216 is. Well, just like there's lots of ways of finding square roots, there are lots of ways that we could find the cube root of numbers as well. We could, using isometric dot paper, build a cube that had 216 little cubes in it. And uh, if we did that, we would eventually see that the length and the width and the height of our cube would need to have side lengths of 6. Therefore, the cube root of 216 would be 6. Another way of doing it would be using the, the chart of the perfect cubes. So we had, what did we have? We had 4 times 4 times 4 being 64. That number is too small. 5 times 5 times 5 was 125. That number was too small. We could try 6 by 6 by 6. And we would see that 6 times 6 times 6 is 216. So the cube root of 216 must be 6. We could also use the factor tree method. 216 divided by 2 would be 108. 
we could take this and divide it by 2 again, which is 54. We can still divide by 2, which is 27. 27 is 3 times 9, and 9 would be 3 times 3. So our prime factors are these. So 216 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. Now since we're looking for a cube root, we want to see groupings of three of them together. So I've got three twos here and I've got three threes here. So the cube root of 216 would be, we've got a grouping of two and we've got a grouping of three and two times three is six. And yet a third way would be to enter this in your calculator as the third root of 216 and it would it would leave that as a six. Not sure what button you have. It, it it's probably going to look something like like um, this. Uh, a little button like that on your calculator, perhaps. Um, and you would then enter three, and then you would hit this button, and it would give you the cube root. Oh, then you have to enter the number two sixteen. And it would give you the cube root of 216, which is 6. So there's a several methods where we could use to find the cube root of a number. I got three numbers here, and we're going to decide whether or not these are perfect squares, or perfect cubes, or both maybe, or neither. So let's investigate the number 64. Well, 64 is pretty small. We can probably just do this in our head. So we're going to see, can we take the square root of 64? Can we find a number that when we multiply it by itself, we would get 64? Um, I think we can. 8 times 8 is 64. So the square root of 64 is 8. Now we've got to find a cube root of something. Cube root of 64 to give us... Uh, what number can we multiply by itself three times that would give us 64? Hmm. Uh, well, we know it's going to need to be smaller than 8 because we had to multiply 8 only twice to get 64. So we're going to need a smaller number than that. Um, let's try 5. 5 times 5 times 5. Oh yeah, that was 125. That's too big. So let's go down to 4. 4 times 4 times 4. Uh, 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 4. Four is 64. So we do have a perfect cube as well for 64. So 64, we can take its square root and we can take its cube root. Uh, and we get 8 and 4 respectively for the square root and the cube root. Now 196, hmm, 196 is getting to be a fairly big number. I'm actually going to go and do a factor tree on this one. I can divide this by 2 because it's an even number. Um, I would get 98. And I can divide this by 2 and I would get 49. And I can divide 49 by 7 and I would get 7. So my prime factorization for 196 is 2 times 2 times 7 times 7. So I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, here's a pair and here's a pair. So the square root of 196 would equal 2 because I have a pair of 2s and 7 because I have a pair of 7s, which is 14. So I can take the square root of 196, but I can tell right away that I don't have any groupings of 3. So I won't be able to take the cube root of 196 only its square root. Let's try 594. Again, this is a very large number. Um, I'm just going to use the uh, factor tree method again. So dividing by 2 would give me 297. Now 297 is divisible by 11 and I would get 
27. Let's just double check that I did that right. 297 divided by 11 should be 27. Good. Doubted myself there. Um, 27 is uh, 9 times 3, and 9 is 3 times 3. So I think we've got all our prime factors now. Let's circle them. 2, 11 is a prime number. 3, 3, and 3. So 594, I could write as 2 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 11. So in order for this to be a, a perfect square, when I write my prime factors, I should have doubles of everything. And clearly here we don't. We only have 1, 2, and we only have 1, 11, and we've got 1, too many 3s here. So I cannot take the square root of 1, uh, 594. The cube root of 594 would work if we had groupings of 3 of everything. Well, we do have a group of 3 here, but we don't have 3 11s, and we do not have 3 2s. So I am not able to take the cube root of 594 either.